Today we will guide you through the process of deploying our Flutter app on the App Store. We will cover the essential steps involved from creating an app on App Store Connect to setting up the app for production release. Let's begin. App Store Connect is the central platform for iOS developers to manage their app's presence on the App Store. It includes a series of steps including prepare app for deployment, creating App Store developer account, creating an app on App Store Connect, loading the app on test flight, and uploading the app on production. We will start by preparing our app for deployment and this step includes multiple sub-steps like changing the app launcher icon, creating a splash screen, changing the app name for iOS, and optimizing the size of our app. The app icon is the face of our app. It is the first thing users see, so it is important to make a good impression. Let's learn how we can set the icon of our app. So I created a demo app named Hello World and we will be going to upload it on App Store. First, we add the package Flutter launcher icons in our pubspec.yml file. After that, we set the following configurations where we set the iOS properties to true and set the image path property to the path of our icon. Next, we run the command flutter pub run flutter launcher icons call in main to generate the new launcher icons. Now, here you can see the launcher icon is replaced with the icon we provided. The next step is to set the app name. As the app name plays a crucial role in attracting users and making our app easily recognizable and searchable in the stores. Let's see how we can set the app name specifically for iOS devices. First, we open the Xcode and here we click on open a project or file. And then we move to the iOS folder for our app and open the runner.exe workspace. Next, we click on Runner and open the Identity section in the General tab. Here you can see the Display Name field. We just set the app name here. Next, we restart our app and make sure our app name is updated. And here you can see the name of our app is updated successfully. Finally, let's optimize the app's size because no one wants a bloated app that takes up more space than a herd of elephants on a trampoline. So basically we can optimize our app size by using two steps, removing unused resources and minimizing resources imported from libraries. Now you can see I have many unused resources here like these images in my asset folder and these packages in my perspect.yml file. So I can remove these resources and you can see the difference between the sizes before and after the optimization. Next, we visit the Apple Developer website and click on Enroll and then click on Start Enrollment to join the Apple Developer Program. You have to log in with your Apple account and if you don't have one, you can create your account by going to Create Yours Now. Follow the prompts to complete the registration process, providing the required information such as your personal details and payment information. Make sure to have any necessary documentation ready such as your tax information or DUNS number. And that's how you can create your App Store developer account. Next, we head over to the App Store Connect website and now we will log in with our Apple developer account credentials. After logging in, just navigate to My App section and then click on Add button and then click on New App to initiate the app creation process. Now that we are in the app creation interface, we will provide essential details about our app. This includes the app's platform name, primary language, bundle ID, SKU, and user access. Now, here you can see we are not seeing any options in the drop down menu, which means we have to create a bundle ID. To create it, we simply click on certificates, identifiers, and profiles. Now, here inside the Apple developer page, we have to provide the description of our bundle ID. Next, we write our bundle ID here which is same as our app's bundle ID. Here you can see a list of capabilities which you can enable for your app's bundle ID. Right now, I am not selecting any of the capabilities as I don't need any of them. You can select it according to your app's requirement. Next, click on continue and then register to register our bundle ID. And here you can see our bundle ID has been successfully registered. Now again navigate to the App Store Connect and here you can see the bundle ID we have registered. After selecting the bundle ID, just enter the SKU of our app. SKU is a unique ID for our app that is not visible on the App Store. Next, select the user access of our app. You can limit which users see this app in App Store Connect. If you select full access, all users will have access to the app. Users with admin, finance and reports role 
cannot have their app access limited and here you can see our app has been successfully created on the app store. In app store we have two tracks, one is test flight which is for testing and the other one is production. First we are going to upload our app on test flight. Just go to the app store connect and then click on my apps. Select our app and navigate to the test flight section. Here provide the beta app description, feedback email, marketing URL and privacy policy URL. After that in the beta app review section, just provide the contact information which includes the first name, last name, phone number, email and review notes. Next click on save to save all the entered information. After that launch the Xcode and open the XC workspace of our Flutter app which can be found in iOS runner workspace. Next, move to the sign in and capabilities section and here go to the team drop down so that you can add our developer account by clicking on add account. This basically connects our app store connect to our Xcode so that we can build archives. Next here you can see the field named bundle identifier. The bundle ID uniquely identifies your app in the Apple ecosystem. Make sure it follows the required format such as com.yourcompany.appname. We also check the automatically managed signing box. Now that we have Xcode set up and our bundle ID configured, let's move on to creating build archives. Next in Xcode, select any iOS device as the build target, then go to product menu and choose archive to create build archive of our app. Once the archive is created, select it and click distribute app to upload the app to App Store Connect. Next. Select App Store Connect and click Next. Xcode will validate the archive and prepare it for the App Store submission. Then click Upload to send your app to the App Store Connect. Afterwards, Xcode will prepare the archive and present distribution options including reducing app size, uploading app symbols and managing the version number. Therefore, select all of these options and then click Next to continue with the upload process. Next, Xcode will provide us with the Resign Runner option to automatically manage signing and manually manage signing. We will select the automatically manage signing option and click on Next to proceed. After some processing time, Xcode will provide a review prompt in which we will click on Upload button to upload our app on the App Store Connect. And here you can see our app has been successfully uploaded on the App Store Connect. Now let's go to the App Store to send our app to our testers for testing. After going to App Store Connect, Click on My Apps and select our app. Next, move to Test Flight tab and here you can see our app has missing compliance that we have to manage in order to proceed. To manage this, click on Manage and select the type of encryption algorithms our app implements. You have to select the option according to your app. In my case, I am going with the fourth option. After that, click on Save to save the selected option. Now, here you can see our app is ready to be submitted. Next, we will add the testers for our app. To do this, simply click on our app and go to the Test Information tab. Here, add the details about the testing features or anything you want to be tested by the testers. Now, here we have three options to add the testers. We can add new testers or we can add existing testers or we can import a CSV file of testers. I am going with the add new testers option. Next, add the email, first name and last name of the testers and click on the next button to proceed. Next, you may need to provide a username and password to sign in if your app requires a sign in. In my case, my app does not require any sign in so I am just clicking next to proceed. Next, add the details about testing features or anything you want to be tested by the testers and then click on submit for review. Now here you can see our testers have been added successfully. Next, let's understand how to configure App Store Connect to publish our app in production. First, navigate to App Store Connect and click on my app. Next, select our app and go to App Store tab. Here, upload the screenshot of different sizes like 6.7 inch, 6.5, 5.5 and 12.9 inch displays. Next, add some promotional text, description and keywords. After that, enter support URL, marketing URL, version and copyright. Next, in the build section, add the build we want to upload in our production. We add the build by clicking on add build and then select our build. 
which we want to upload. After that, in the app review information section, provide the contact information such as first name, last name, phone number and email. Also provide the sign-in information if our app requires sign-in. In my case, my app does not require any sign-in, so I am not checking this sign-in box. Next, just provide some notes about our app. After that, in the version release section, we have three options from which we have to select one according to our requirements. I am selecting the second option because it suits best according to my requirements. Next, click on the save button to save all the details and then click on review button to send our app for review. Now here you can see we have some errors because we have to provide some details to start the review process of our app as these items are required to start the review process. So let's start with the first error which is that you must select the level of frequency for each Apple content description in the age rating section. To solve this error, click on app information and then go to the age rating section to set age rating across all platforms. Age rating consists of three steps and you have to complete all these steps in order to complete the age rating section. Now in the first step, here you can see we have a list of content description and their frequency level. We have to select the frequency for each content according to our apps criteria. After selecting the frequencies, click on next to proceed the next step in which we have to select whether or not our app contains the following content. I am answering these two questions according to my apps criteria and your answer may differ from mine. Next click on apps age rating. Right now I am going with the 17 plus option. Remember that here again all the answers to questions and information I am providing is according to my apps criteria. After that click on the done button to save our provided information and now we have to set the content rights information. To do this we simply click on set up content rights information and then we answer the ask question according to our apps criteria. Right now I am not showing any third party app content so I am selecting the second option. Next click on done and then click on save button to save our provided information. Now let's move to the second error that is you must enter a privacy policy URL in app privacy. To solve this navigate to app privacy section and then click on add it to add the privacy policy URL and then click on save to save the URL. After that click here and select the option accordingly and then click on save. Now here you can see we have added our privacy policy URL and declared that our app does not collect any sort of data. After that click on publish to publish our app privacy responses. Next move to the app submission again to solve the remaining errors or we can say to do the remaining steps that are required to send our app to review. The next step is to select the category of our app. To do this navigate to the app information page and then go to the general information section. Here add the primary category category of our app from the given list. I am selecting the primary category as education. In your case, it may differ. Next, click on save to save the information. Now, move to the app submission again to solve the remaining errors. The next step is to select the app price. And for this, we go to the pricing section by clicking here. Now, here you can see there are two sections that is pricing and availability of our app. First, set the price by clicking on add price and here I am setting my app Apps price as zero dollars. You can choose your app price accordingly and then click on next to proceed. Now here you can see we can select the price in each country separately. I want my app to be a free app so that is why I am proceeding with the 0, 0.0 dollar and then click on next to save the information. Next. Set the availability of our app by clicking on setup availability. Now here you can see we can select the countries in which we want our app to be available. Right now I am selecting all countries. You can select the countries according to your requirements. Next click on done and then save the provided information. Now again navigate to app submission page and click on the add for review button. And here you can see our app is now ready for review. Next when you are confident that everything is in order click on the submit for review button. This will initiate the review process for your app's release to the app store and here you can see our app has been successfully submitted for review process and now our app is waiting to be reviewed by app store. So this is how you can deploy your app to the app store. If you received value from this video just press the like and subscribe button. If you want to learn more about Flutter visit heyflutter.com. Apply for our 12 week Flutter training program to master Flutter.